needs it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ama Wrestling episode 23. And to start off tonight, ladies and gentlemen, something tells me this one's not going to be pretty. Coming to the ring is Sniper. Sniper, of course, last week took out Tyler Don backstage from some choice words about possibly losing his title. And I mean, he's just been angry ever since that happened. We're looking to take that out on this man in the ring here already. As the ref calls this match to get underway, I think the first thing that you know you have to notice here in this match is just the size difference, the weight difference. It's going to go to the reach. Sniper throwing some strikes early on. And while the weight difference is usually brought up, ooh, huge DDT there. Uh, the weight difference is usually brought up in terms of lifting and, you know, more power moves. You got to think when it comes to striking, like those combinations we kind of saw earlier on. But, of course, into this avalanche brain buster. He's going for the pin immediately to... No. No, he kicks out. Don't know if uh, Sniper's just kind of letting him kind of do such a thing, but with strikes like this, with the weight difference between the two men, you got to think having that much little muscle makes it so much harder to absorb damage, which is something that Sniper does so well as he just capitalizes off of the Brain Buster. little bit about the other competitor we've learned in this paper in front of me that his name is Neil been training for a little bit this is his first match on this sort of stage but sniper shows no mercy to any opponent as I think we already have some blood early on. Might be a little harder to see because of the headband, but... You know, Sniper laying in those elbows might be a little bit easier to see as time goes along. 
See the plants that knee on the back. And just gloats in it. He Sniper while he can back it up, still does have that little bit of an ego to him. Not too much, though, in comparison to some other people we have here on the roster, but he knows what he can do, and when he does it, he sure, he lets you know that he can do it. Slamming him down, going for the pin, not hooking the leg. He's able to kind of slide out, maybe hit the leg, that would have been it. Things about matches like this where, you know, there's a huge advantage for one person. So you can see more of those elbows just to the head. You can see there's some blood over his eye now. Possibly two different cuts at this point. Just laying in those elbows at any sort of thing he can. Any sort of part of his body he so willingly can. You see that giant skull crusher. He scoops him over for the pin. Two. No, another kick out. He's not giving up quite yet. It's got him up for the kill shot. He lands at home. That's probably it. And that's it. Sniper picks up the easy victory. So he gets some more aggression out of his system. But he's walking out of this match without the one thing he wants the most in this company. He made as far as we can see in that room. They just saw much blood he was, he was going out of his head at moments like that. Oh, it's Ichi. Ichi's in the ring. Grabs the chair away from Sniper. Well, why would you do something like that? On to our next match as we just see Ichi come to the aid of Neil. Gonna look as that story kind of develops a little bit. Not fully sure why Ichi would run out there in harm's way like that for someone who's not even a part of his family. I'll talk a little bit more about that during this match, but as right now, a very controversial figure in the women's division as Rose A is coming out to the ring. Last time we saw Rose was at Hypermania in that tag team match, where she hopped off the apron, leaving her tag partner Maria Garcia in a handicap match between the newly formed tag team of Chiquita Bonita. Rose probably thought. That tag match was beneath her, wanted to be going after gold. She gets that title, that that opportunity to prove herself and her worth, specifically here tonight. She goes up against the women's champion in Destiny. But you know Maria probably doesn't, has unfinished business when it comes to her and Rosé. left her stranded.
and still no no it's all about me coming out now your ammo women's champion destiny a woman in her own right surrounded in controversy earned that title fair and square probably held it beforehand a little bit you know before she actually earned it can't argue with the results, however, as Destiny thus far is undefeated in the division. As this women's division is still taking form, you know there's probably going to be someone who can knock her off eventually. We have yet to see it. Former champion Courtney has only lost two matches. Still have the yet to receive word on when she's going to be cashing in that rematch clause. You see Destiny starting off with a big move herself. Rose, however, getting in that double foot stomp. Rose has been so close to this title, yet so far at the same time. following many, many opportunities, but just have been so, uh, just a little too short. Going for the early pin. This is the first time these two women, I believe, have ever faced off. Especially first time here in ammo wrestling. Anything can happen, however, as Rose looks to kind of have a little bit of control here early on. Destiny following it up with that backbreaker and of the lariat to the back of the head, disorienting Rose. Now driving in some knees to the side. Some more knees. Focusing on some of the back of the neck, some of the ribs. Going for an early pin herself. You got a kick out there. Last week, speaking of Rose and Maria, Maria had her opportunity against Revenge, against Chiquita Bonita. It came up short in a Long effort in that tag match with her and Selena. As Destiny with the just driving in those two her two feet into the chest of Rose there. This match could go fairly long it in its own right. See another pin. Only a one count there. Huge Dr. Teeth there from Rose that could possibly change the tide of this match. Just got her into the reverse DDT. Maybe even a hammerlock reverse DDT. Another kick out, however. See that rolling Death Valley driver there by Destiny. This Rose sending her to the outside. She, you know, takes to the outside after taunting to the fans. Oh, but she, she met by Destiny with this huge, big, old spine buster. Rose now using her feet. Getting some kicks in. Focusing on many different parts. Six. 
the things about matches like this where you don't really know a lot about your opponent that we've kind of seen between both women is the ability to, you know, target different parts, different limbs, trying to find a weak spot between your opponent. Trying to find that weak spot, maybe that thing where, you know, that injury you had when you were a little bit younger that you just never, you know, not not as strong as your other body parts that you can then exploit later. Especially if these two women end up meeting again. Seeing a lot of these almost vintage moves by these women at this, at this point with that double stomp. Jose taking her up in the TKO. Possibly taking her out, but she's also got to get her back in the ring too. Deciding to throw her closer to the barricade. Round number seven, at the count of seven now, as Rose breaks it, going back to the outside. kicks just to the face of destiny sending her into the ring post now possibly some of the bigger differences between these two women it's just the difference of their type of offense as we see the thorn of the rose she's going for the pin only a two count I think that's the first two count of this matchup. Jose trying to, to establish, get back in and establish the momentum she has right now. Got her up again and another TKO. Goes for the pin. One, two, no, another kick out by the champion. Rose setting up again to finish this match. No, it's caught by Destiny in the takedown and the punches. That type of takedown is what they teach in self defense class. That's not anything fancy. That's just how you get your opponent off the ground as she goes for that attitude adjustment. One, two, no, and only a two count by Rose there. That could have been the end of the match. It's Destiny now getting some momentum back on her side. Finishes off with that clothesline. Rose then sent to the corner. Fighting off Destiny in that corner, sends it to her herself. Got her at the bottom of the ropes. And this drop, no, like more of a leg drop to the back of the neck. It's a possible whiplash right there. That's it's brutal in its nature. Destiny, however, fighting through with that huge spear that could possibly knock out Destiny. Especially with some of the shots to the ribs. And that's three as Destiny picks up Amber Mays undefeated here in Ammo Wrestling. Great fight between both women. You gotta feel like Rose, even though she failed, she came up a little close once again. She's still on the edge of becoming the women's champion, getting one of those higher matches. So right now is the moment for Destiny. As she's celebrating here tonight. Oh! Courtney 
Courtney. First time we have seen Courtney since her losing the title at Hypermania. She's come down to the ring. And I think she might be telling her right now that she's getting that rematch clause. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your main event. It's coming down to the ring. It's Luke Franklin. Let the sun from my eyes, let it burn. Luke Kobayashi here tonight in the number one contenders match for the pure championship. The winner of this match will go on to face GT Bobby Man at external conflict in the pure wrestling rules. Guitar, you know who it is. The pillar himself, Kenji Kobayashi. This is a huge test for Kenji himself. Going up against someone with the statue of Luke Franklin. Kenji the Star has also been undefeated here in Ammo Wrestling. Taking on people like Vernon Quinn in his debut matchup, Eddie J in what was just a brutal. Back and forth. Andy Garrett two weeks ago. And now Luke Franklin in tonight's main event. The ref sounds for the bell. Huge flapjack to start off now. Because you just get a duo of those. Both very big men as he's, we go out to the outside early in this one. Luke looking to pick him up. Kenji meeting that with elbows and then throws a lariat. Due to the size of both men, however, neither one of them fall. Luke Franklin, after piecing up with some combos, able to take down Kenji. Of course, the champion, as I mentioned, BT Bobby Mann. Saw him last week in champion versus champion action. Of course, it was disturbed or brought down by Romero, who ended up costing or hopping in the ring and taking out the champion PK King. You see an exchange of chops on the outside and that tilt whirl DDT. But of course, before Romero, oh, some more chops. Before Romero interfered and interrupted that match, BT was giving it to one of the, the best men we have here in Ammo Wrestling in your champion. Didn't quite get to see how that was going to fall out. Luke Franklin up to the second rope. Not fully connecting as much as I don't think he wanted. But still connecting a little bit with maybe, you know, forearm or a knee. See another lariat there not taking Luke Franklin off of his feet. Now Luke Franklin being tossed to the outside. Still on the ropes, however. This is going to stay in the ring for now. See another Irish whip into that back elbow. Taking Kenji down. Just 
suplex there by Luke Franklin. So now he's just laying in on some punches on Kenji. I'm still thinking about earlier in the night as, you know, talking about Romero and this sort of family he has and interrupting PK and taking him down and what Ichi did. I feel like there is possibly a couple of motivations for that of what he did. You see Kenji picking him up for a huge Alabama slam. Feeling amped up after that as Luke slowly getting up in that corner there. But as I was saying, there's possibly a couple motivations there between the two as we see some chops from Kenji. Both men just dedicated to striking and inflicting pain. Well, barely a two count there. But Ichi being a man who won is always is seemingly always looking for a fight. If anybody out of the Devilfish family, what I say is, has potential of doing good, I'd say that has to be Ichi. So whether Ichi was just looking out for you know the smaller competitor and wanted Sniper has another kick out. Was Luke Franklin just not wanting to stay down at the moment? Just that hammers on the back in between the shoulder blades on the spine. Clubbing him again. Going for that takedown. Working on the arm. Ichi also, however is one of the people that looks for a fight. He's not necessarily, a, you know, some, oh, there's a huge pop-up punch there by Luke Franklin. That's put away many opponents before. Two, no, is a kick out by Kenji. Rolling between, rolling out of that, Kenji's able to catch him. Answers with a suplex. Grabbing at the shoulder. He's done a lot of damage to many of the shoulder area, many like just possibly stopping some of those major strikes and punches. Getting him up for a huge sit out, Uranagi. Gets him up. There's Steiner suplex. Steiner suplex? Oh, I'm and then a huge chop. Not Luke Franklin still on his feet. He's starting to crank at the neck. Luke Franklin getting out of it. Shots to the stomach. Escapes him again. Tilt to whirl. DDT. Luke isn't the most agile big man, but he. That's one of the moves he's made a trademark for himself. As he's got Kenji and the Kraken pile driver. As you know, that's not going to be it. He's getting him up. And he meets him with a clothesline. Another clothesline. That back heel kick to the face, knocking Kenji down as he just gets on him and starts laying in some more punches. We've seen this move quite a lot from Luke Franklin as well. He just holds it for the pin. Two and a kick out by Kenji. And a huge pop up punch once again. That modern baseball punch to the face as he gets another two count. To finish talking about Ichi real quick. We see some just hammering shots by Luke Franklin. 
part of the reason why that might have also happened is, I mean, if Sniper's going to fight anybody, why not fight your partner, your friend's enemy's friend? It's very linear, you know? You have P.K. King, the champion, going up against Romero. And then you have both of their almost tag team partners. We haven't really seen... PK and Sniper tag too much outside of one match against the Young Lions. But they do have, they have formed the kingdom. So, I mean, it's almost second in command versus second in command. And I say that not to say, you know, Sniper's lesser than PK. I'm just talking about the success they've had here thus far. They've both held titles here, however. Neither, none of the members of Devilfish family have. Neither have either of these men in the ring. As he sends them into the barricade. Once again into the barricade as he sends them into the ring. Looking to finish things off now. Ref looking at him, seeing if he's responding, seeing if he's okay. As we can see, he is wrenching on that thing, hitting with a drop kick. That shoulder block there by Kenji, taking Luke Franklin down as he's as he's stalking him now, picking him up now for the burning hammer, the last pillar. It's one, two, no, it's a kick out. It's spinning side slam almost. Kenji is a dangerous and violent man. He is not a person to take lightly when you enter those ropes or those chops that just leave you breathless. I don't know how Luca stood after so many of these. The reason why his nickname is The Pillar is because he was such a foundational role in what has happened in the revitalization in Japan. As we see that side slam again. Almost like a side slamming Uranagi almost. He takes it down now and just lands, hits him with that headbutt to the shoulder. And this is when Saiz just comes into play as he's just hyping himself up. He's feeling the fans energy. As that axe handle to just the side of the head. And another chop sending Luke Franklin still on his feet to the ropes. Putting him against those top ropes now. Just laying in those knees. Possibly popping in and out some ribs in the place. He just finishes that up with the fall away slam into a. Oh no, a brain buster! Thought he was going for the suplex there. But no, now he's going for the pin. One, two, three. Kenji Kobayashi has won and is your number one contender for the Pure Championship, heading into external conflict. He's another competitor, but I'm not 100% sure how he fits into those match rules and those match, match regulations. But if BT Bobby Man has anything to say about any of these things, it's, it shows that his style is adaptable. Any style is adaptable to these rules. Kenji when it comes to his chops and his strikes and his grappling ability. It, I, I, if I was BT Bobby Man, I'd be, uh, I'd feel a little outmatched. Of course, 
know, he has the championship, and that's something you can't take away easily. He has earned it, but Kenji Kobayashi undefeated thus far. Winning here tonight. As the guitar solo plays, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next week.